Our guest of honor is known primarily, of course, for her political roles as First Lady, U.S. Senator from New York, and the 67th Secretary of State. But she's also just published her fifth book and has several previous bestsellers to her name. So added to the list of credits after Hillary Rodham Clinton should certainly be accomplished author. Hard Choices, her memoir about her four years as Secretary of State, recounts how she came to accept the cabinet position offered by her former political rival and then led the effort to strengthen our nation's standing around the world. The book also reveals some of the less wonkish, less battle-hardened sides of her not commonly glimpsed in public. Humorous, self-deprecating, maternal, maybe even grand maternal, almost. Although Hillary credits a small team of people for helping with the book, she carved out months on her calendar to write and rewrite it herself. And the result is a work that is undeniably in her voice. It also clearly leaves room for future chapters in one more memoir someday. This evening's, <laughs> this evening's event is particularly special particularly uh, special for me because I not only get to introduce the main speaker, but also my wife, who will be up here in conversation with Hillary. The two of them go back together to the early days of the Clinton administration, and Lissa has since served with Hillary in various roles as White House and State Department speechwriter, communications director to the First Lady, campaign advisor, and collaborator on Hillary's White House memoir, living history. These days when Hillary and Lissa talk, I think they spend most of their time discussing the latest great novel, mystery, or biography that they're reading. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Hillary Rodham Clinton and Lissa Muscatine. Um, it is great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thanks to you and, and Brad for running such a great bookstore. Thank you. Politics Thank and you. prose. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, speaking of books, uh, you've, you've had it out for four days now. I, that's right. Four, I guess. That's Tuesday, right. right? Tuesday. <laughs> you probably lost count because it's been one of these paces that was more like when you were secretary. Exactly. You started your book tour. You're traveling all over the place. You're doing all these interviews. You're keeping a pretty frenetic pace. But I have to ask you, because from the first time I've read this book, and I've read it several times now, I was struck by a kind of lightheartedness in it. Hmm. It's a serious book. It, it deals with, obviously, very serious issues. But there's a lighter side that comes through. Yeah. And so I'm wondering, as I've watched you just in these first four days, and you've had some tough interviews, mm -hmm. you seem like you're having a really good time. Well, Lissa, I am having a good time. And I think that's in part due to uh, the uh, enthusiasm that I have uh, experienced as I've traveled around in these last couple of days. Uh, it's a great feeling to have written a book about four uh, years that were consequential in my view, and we can talk about that more, but which for me were both a, a personal journey and a uh, very heavy responsibility. And what I tried to do in the book was to write it so that I could give you, the readers, uh, a bit of a peek behind the curtain. Uh, because the headlines certainly tell some of the story, but not all of the story. And it's more difficult to even get information about the so-called trend lines. I wanted to combine both. And the hardest part for me about writing this book uh, was that it was, believe it or not, three times longer when I first finished it. 
I wanted to put every funny story, every bizarre meal, I mean, wh whatever uh, I could remember and, and wanted to share. And uh, the publisher did say, uh, you've got to cut two thirds of this book. And so uh, I worked hard to keep the combination of seriousness, because obviously there's a lot of that, but also the human side, not just me, but what I saw in the, and learned as I traveled around the world. Uh, you've never been shy about your opinions, but it does seem to me that you're, you're pretty free to speak your mind these days. I think that's true uh, from uh, some of the reactions that I've had the last few days. <laughs> and I, I say in the book um, that maybe it's just the wonderful wealth of experience that I've now had. Maybe it's because I am totally done with, uh, you know, being really careful about what to say because somebody might think this instead of that. It just gets too exhausting and frustrating. And it just seems a whole lot easier to uh, just put it out there uh, and hope people get used to it. Uh, whether it, you agree with it or not, to know exactly where I'm coming from, what I think, what I feel. I really believe that's missing in our um, our, both our government dialogue, and of course many of you probably are somehow associated uh, in some way with um, our government, and certainly in our political dialogue. There are so many big issues, and I talk about some of them, both internationally and uh, nationally, and I, I don't think we gain by either shouting matches or finger pointing or uh, biting one's tongue. I think we really need to have a very open, um, straightforward conversation, and maybe I'm trying to model that, I don't know, but that's how it feels to me, and, and it, it feels a little bit liberating to be uh, honest. And it's great to watch, I have to say. It's, well, it's, it's, a, it's, it's nice to see. You so. know, there, there, there are occasions when I think people gulp a little, uh, but <laughs> okay. I, um, including myself, to be, <laughs> to be fair, uh, but I, I really want to share the experiences that I've had. I mean, I came to this job, as I write in the book, in quite an unusual way, um, and I was incredibly surprised when the president asked me to serve, and and slightly less surprised when I finally agreed to. Uh, and then it was just from the very first moment a, a mad dash because we inherited uh, a pretty serious uh, agenda of problems and challenges. Uh, so the perspective that I've gained, uh, I think, has encouraged me even more to speak my mind and, and uh, contribute what I can to whatever debate's occurring. Let's, let's talk about, uh, actually, the process of writing the book uh, before we get to the substance of it, because I remember from the last book, you were, you had a day job. I did. You were in the Senate, and um, this is really true, honest to goodness truth, because I was working with you on that book. Uh, you did a lot of the work on that book between about midnight and 3 a.m., and I remember having routine meetings with you around your dining room table yes. at 3 a.m. Uh, right. We did that for a few months to get it finished. Uh, this time you carved out more time to really, really focus on it, and and I think it's interesting, you, you had a great team working for you, but you are not somebody who has ever taken a draft, be it of a book, a speech, a chapter, and just said, oh great, this looks good, let's put it between a cover or publish it right now, it's fine. You've always kind of slaved over your writing. Uh, you write, you rewrite, you still write in longhand on a legal pad. I do. Um, and Anybody who's ever been with somebody who's writing a book knows that it's a little bit like watching someone go through labor. It's an incredibly painful process, but there's <laughs> great joy at the end. And sort of on the scale of pain and joy, uh -huh. what was the process of writing this book like for you? Well, I should, I should preface what I, what I say by um, making clear that Lissa has been my partner in some of the most important uh, writing and speaking that I've done going back to the White House years when she was a speechwriter at the White House, and as I point out in the chapter of, uh, called Unfinished Business about both women's rights and LGBT rights and other human rights, uh, Lissa was uh, my partner in the, uh, the women's uh, speech in Beijing. Fast forward, she was also my partner in uh, the Living History uh, autobiography, and what she is describing is absolutely true, and it was incredibly stressful uh, because I did have this uh, day job that I loved, uh, but I had said and signed a contract, so I was obligated to produce a book. Uh, so I would come home, and Lissa, despite all of her many responsibilities, including her wonderful family, 
uh, would be around that dining room table with me.